My name is Bailey Harris, and she talked a little bit about me already, but I'm 13 years old and can't wait to speak with you guys. So I have two brothers, a little sister, a mom and dad, and two dogs that I love so, so, so much. This is my dog, Lady, uh, my personal dog, and I love her so much. I've loved soccer ever since I was a little girl, and I still love it now, and I still play soccer, and it's it's amazing. I love soccer so much. Uh, I, my family loves education shows and s education books, such as PBS Kids, Bill Nye the Science Guy, and one of my other favorite books, The Magic of Reality. Um, since my parents were secular, we, we read a lot of educational books. And while some kids were learning how to say the word dog, I was learning from many books how to say the word teak to leak. So, um, my parents loved setting up like presentations such as secu seven secular virtues. We were always learning those secular virtue things. Uh, one of my favorite rules is the platinum rule. Uh, treat others the way that they would like to be treated because everyone actually has different values and I really think that's a really good rule. Ever since I was little, I've been kind of weird and I'm still weird now. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's go weird. Um, I have loved pink ever since I was little. Right now, that's not my favorite color, but uh, I used to have pink hair, a pink bow, a pink skirt, and a pink backpack, as you can see. Um, since I've been weird, my kindergarten teacher used to say that I was the only one that went to the nonfiction section in the library. So. That was really cool, and she was like, what the heck, like, why is there no one else going to the nonfiction section? So, I love the stars, and I love looking at the constellation, and I get these apps where you could just see the, like, what, where they're placed and stuff, and my, we have a trampoline in our backyard, and I would set out with my family, and we would go and look at, like, different constellations, and it was really fun, and yeah. <laughs> we lived in, I live in Utah right now, currently, so that's interesting. <laughs> there's, a, there's a lot of amazing things there, though, such as the amazing national parks, the Osmonds, you know, <laughs> that's great. Um, the ginormous copper mine that you can see from space. I mean, right, it's gorgeous. Uh, the Salt Flats, and we hosted the Salt Lake 2002 Winter Olympics, and also we host the Sundance Film Festival every year. Guys, honestly, are we missing anything about, about Utah? Does anyone know? <laughs> right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Utah is the worldwide headquarters for the Mormon Church. Oh, I mean, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, excuse me. Uh, this is me in third grade. Uh, I, since, I live at, since I've lived there since I was little in Utah, uh, these were the kids that were surrounding me. Little Mormon ones, right? So, <laughs> and these kids, it was... I was so happy about this year, so, so, so happy. I have loved school ever since I was little. A few parts, not really, but I, I really love science and the uh, educational part. Um, these kids were all scheming how to turn me into a Mormon, or they might, may have been looking at how I had a sleeveless shirt. <laughs> you know, heathen child, but... <laughs> Uh, they also wanted me to read these very, very, this very special book. Does anyone know what book it might be? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, they wanted me to read the Book of Mormon. This was one of the biggest turning ports, points in my life. Uh, since I didn't know a lot about the Book of Mormon, I asked my parents what it was. They told me a little brief summary of what it was. They told me that a man put his face in a hat and saw words appear on a magical rock, on an, and it was 
an Egyptian language that no one knew. So it also claims that ancient Jews built a boat and sailed to America 2,600 years ago. When the evidence shows that ancestors of Native Americans walked across the first in Bering Strait. I also learned that this angel came down and gave, and gave Joseph Smith these golden plates, and no one ever saw them. That's, like, very curious, guys. Does, I don't get it. Uh, these kids were obviously not trying to be rude. Uh, they, they were just being good little Mormon missionaries, like they were taught to be. Um, but the concept of... Jesus came up with these kids, and they went simply crazy when I told them that I didn't believe in Jesus. They were like, oh my gosh, you don't believe in Jesus? Yeah, I was like, yeah, I don't. But then these one kid, this one particular girl who thought it was crazy that I didn't believe in Jesus, started just following me, following me around at recess and telling me that I wasn't going to go to the little pretty princess castle in the sky that I was going to go to a place called hell. So this was very hard for me as a child. So I would hide from her every single day because it, she scared me so bad. I would uh, run away and she would still follow me. One day she got the yard duty and she was like, that girl ain't playing with me, she's a bully. And I was like, oh, oh. That's a little far. And so she, the yard duty took me to the assistant principal, and the assistant principal told me that I was being a bully. And so she gave me anti-bullying books. I had to stay in every day after school and uh, during the day, and I would have to read these books during lunch and recess, which sucked, because that means I don't get to play with my friends. So. My mom came in and she was like, what the heck, why is she not out at recess playing with all the other kids? So she went to the assistant principal and the assistant principal uh, didn't tell my mom anything like an apology. She told me, you moved here from California to Utah, what do you expect? <laughs> you know, that wasn't interesting. Well, we got out of the school, but uh, when I was little, this was the turning point. Point. Uh, I had very dark times. I had to go see counselors and many other people's because it was so hard for me. Uh, I wondered if I wanted to even be alive during this time. It was really, really, really hard. So, yeah. Well, on to the happy part of the story, guys. <laughs> uh, I love the just the concept of Cosmos, the Space Time Odyssey. Uh, since I loved watching educational shows, I would always watch Cosmos, you know? It was really fun. Uh, my family and I would watch it every Saturday and Sunday, kind of our own church, you know? Uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson said, the planets, the stars, the galaxies, we ourselves, and all alike, the same star stuff. As a child, I freaked out because he said this, and I went straight upstairs to my computer, and I started typing my book. It was really, it was so amazing. I loved it. Uh, this is what the, the actual document of the day that I wrote it looks like. And as you can tell, guys, it's a little close. <laughs> Just a Just a little bit. <laughs> So I named it the Book of Truth, and I came up with my dad, another testament of cool science. So this is me when I was eight, and I was drawing out what my title and my book was going to look like at the front page. Obviously, guys, it's, it didn't look like that at the end. <laughs> this is what it looks like now, and I'm so proud of my first book. We talk about uh, so many things in the book. And we have amazing people that supported our book, such as Dale McGowan, Eric Michael, and Michael Shermer. They gave us so many early support and helped us figure out how to lay out the book. In the first page, we talk about single-celled organisms and how they were the first to be alive and how they started. We also talk about how there are more stars in our universe than there are grains of sand on Earth. We also talk about... Uh, different planets, and Earth. This is a tribute to Cassini, and Cassini, uh, the, 
the image of when he, the satellite turned around and got Saturn and the little tiny ball of Earth, which was an amazing shot. And of course I had to add my favorite, favorite ancient creature, Teak to Leak. He was really, she, I, I don't know, it was really great. Uh, <laughs> Lucy is one of my favorite ape-like animals who walked upright. She lived about 3.2 million years ago in Africa. Also, this is one of my favorite pages. It sounds kind of confusing, okay? But I'm going to read it to you. Unicorns lived on Earth a long time ago with pixies and fairies. <laughs> no, just kidding. There's no evidence of real unicorns, pixies, or fairies. But if they were real, they would be made of stardust. So that, that was fun. When I was little, I went to Book Expo and Book Con with my dad, and we signed books, and it was really great. Uh, we wanted to ask a question about uh, what their favorite planet was. They seemed so excited when I asked them this question. They were always like, oh, my favorite planet is, you know? And the crazy thing is that Earth was the favorite planet. I was like, wow, no, I'm just kidding, no. Earth is great. <laughs> I did a lot of studying on each planet. I watched videos and drew and write it out. So I got to like 50 questions and wrote so many things about it. This is what the book actually looks like. And we talk about the Big Bang, the, how Earth supports life, many cool facts about each planet, how people can believe the weirdest things when answers aren't even known yet. And then I decided, well, why don't I write my third book on evolution? So I decided that I wanted to also bring in a new character. His name is Vincent, and Stardust and Vincent go through many things, and he's a skeptical little kid, and I'm going to read this page to you. Stardust, where did plants and animals come from? Was it magic? No, Vincent, it wasn't magic, but the process is even more special than magic. Uh, we also talk about geology and evidence. We talk about the history of the Earth. Fossils help us understand history and examples of animal evolution. As you can see, my little dog is right behind the fox. I had to include my dog. Like, we all love dogs, right? <laughs> so the difference between direct ancestors and cousins, and I also have my dog on this slide too, <laughs> mutations, and I'm coming out with a board game, and we partnered with Go Extinct, and it's coming out next year, and I can't wait until it comes out, and hopefully you guys enjoy it. I have three amazing books, and I am so proud of all of them, and I'm so thankful for the people that support it. I'm an, since I'm older, guys, I'm an activist <laughs> for, <laughs> I'm an activist for three things. Science education, equality, and atheism. Thank you. Science education comes naturally for me, since I've written so many books. And, you know, this guy who doesn't simply believe in climate change, guys. <laughs> like, this is one of the main reasons why I'm so passionate about it. When s this is happening in our world. And humans are causing it. And that is just crazy to me. Guys, is it crazy that people still believe in this? <laughs> like, really, we, we live on a turtle and the earth is flat? Okay. Well, we, this is one of my favorite quotes from Charles Darwin. Freedom of thought is best promoted by the gradual illumination of men's minds, which follows from the advance of science. Since I... I love science education. I love doing things for science education, such as PBS specials. I do book readings in many classes. I go to my favorite places, such as Black Rock, Re Black Rock Beach in Hawaii. Um, I do radio interviews. I Skype with many kids around the world. And I do science experiments on TV. Equality is another really big one for me. Uh, I have always loved LGBTQ rights and supported it, and I think we need more for that. This is my cousin Tate. Um, he's really cool. And 
he was out at a gas station one day, and these two guys approached him with two hot coffee, uh, I mean hot chocolates, and they threw it on him and called him gay. This is just crazy to me, guys. Like, this shouldn't be happening in our world. We should all be accepted. Um, this is our actual first openly gay female mayor in Utah, which is crazy. In Utah, there's an openly female gay mayor. Yeah, she's super awesome. I met her. I love her so much. Um, since I love soccer, I love watching them too. Uh, the U.S. Women's National Team, the most crazy thing to me is that they're getting paid half as much as what the men's are being paid. That is crazy. Like, they're playing really good and they're winning their games and they're getting paid half. Megan Rapino from the team says, it's time for action on equal pay for women's soccer players. Um, another big one is atheism, and I wonder why I'm here, guys. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Uh, religion is always constantly fighting these, the two, science education and equality, which is crazy. Um, I partnered with Secular Student Alliance, and I went to the ARC. That was a fun experience. <laughs> so, uh, uh, on the left big photo, uh, this woman heard me talk about how Earth is only is 4.5 billion, it formed 4.5 billion years ago. This woman went simply crazy since we were in the ark, and she was like, oh my gosh, I'm going to go tell security, and went, <laughs> yeah. So she went and told security on us, and luckily we didn't get kicked out. So, um, yeah, that was fun. Oh. And this is, I love Secular Student Alliance. It really gives people an option in their schools to be safe. I go, I do it with my brothers at their, at their school and my school. I am so glad to be here with you guys and with so many other conferences as well. Uh, it was, it's really fun going to so many places and meeting so many amazing people. I also get to speak with amazing people like Sam and Rushdie. Like, who, what the heck? I, I like saw him and I was like, oh my gosh. And I was like, you're right there, you know? So I was signing next to him and I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> so guys, honestly, this is abuse. Like telling kids that this is where they're gonna go to if they don't, if they don't listen or do something bad, it's horrible for kids all around the world. Actually, I have a favorite quote from the Ark. Who thought I would have a favorite quote from the Ark? <laughs> if I can convince you that the flood was not real, then I can convince you that heaven and hell are not real. All right? As we look up into the night sky and see that there are so many amazing stars and constellations and know that we're floating on a rock in space, it is crazy to think that we are here on this earth and that we're made of stardust. And I'm so glad to be here today, guys. Thank you so much. I, I can't thank you guys enough. Uh, see you guys later. Bye. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and ring that bell to be notified about new videos. You can follow us on social media, and if you really love what we do, consider supporting us with a donation. Links to all that good stuff is in the description below.